like my luck. Now, I was just not going to like that fly. You might ask why we use hair flies, especially with all the new materials being developed. Well, I'll tell you, especially for dry flies, nothing is more natural and floats better than the natural hair. You get a great variety of new dyed hairs that will match any insect color. We use more natural, whether it be elk, deer, moose, or any of the other hairs than any other material. But one of the most frustrating things when it comes to using, whether it be deer hair or elk hair, is the actual mechanics of tying it onto the fly. No matter what insect we're trying to imitate, there's a hair, whether it be dyed or natural, that can be shaped to match that insect. Its durability and its floatability makes it a very important part of our fly tying game. In the upcoming segments, we're going to show you how to tie western hair dry flies. And we want you to remember some of the tips that we're going to give you. Because you too can tie a fly, make a cast, and hook in to a beautiful trophy of a lifetime. Tying your own flies is a very intricate part of the sport we call fly fishing. Help him out here. Help him out a little deeper. Yeah, he's going to be just fine. One of the first flies that I teach in my seminars is the humpy. It's a basis of a lot of different patterns. Whether it be the royal wolf or the royal humpy or any of your hair wing flies, if you can tie a humpy first, you'll do a great job in all the rest. So in our first fly, we'll have a humpy. We'll show you how to do it and how to tie it properly. Everything in the humpy, whether it be the wings, the tail, or the body, is the methods that you're going to be using in the upcoming flies. You might say to yourself, boy, <laughs> we're really starting on a hard fly. But I'm going to help you learn how to tie this fly a lot easier. First of all, we must start out with the right materials. We're going to need some dry fly hooks size 6 through 22 and good tying thread size 3 aught mono cord for the larger flies, 6 aught tying thread for the smaller flies, moose body hair for the tail, and deer hair for the body and wing. Grizzly saddle hackle for the larger flies and grizzly neck hackle for the smaller flies. Now we place the hook in the vise. Notice the end of the point there. And now we're going to lay down our thread. Now this is important that the thread end at this point, at the end of the barb. Now this is an important thing to remember because it will balance the fly out properly. Now notice the bend of the hook to the eye of the hook. That's the shank. And this proportioning will make sure that you have a proper wing and tail that will balance out. Now we're going to lay our thread out halfway down the shank. We're going to wrap our thread. Notice where the shank and the bend from the eye to the bend there. Okay, we're going to get our thread out of the way. That thread always seems to get in the way. Now we're going to wrap it towards the back. Now here's that point that I showed you. Remember that because there'll be a test in the morning. Now we're going to go back up and end right at this point, halfway down from the bend to the eye. Now let's get some tail material. We're going to clip off our moose, make sure it's nice and even. Now it's important to prepare your hair before you put it in a stacker. Get all the little small pieces out. Use your finger there to knock out any of these excess pieces. Now we're going to prepare it properly to put it in the stacker. Okay, here we go. We're going to drop it in the stacker right like that. We're going to add a few little taps right there, wake up everybody. 
And now look and see how even it is. Now, you gotta have some good hand and eye coordination here to make sure the tail stays together. Okay, now let's put the tail on the shank. Now we're going to measure the tail from the bend of the eye, that'll be the total length of the shank. We're going to take out a few fibers so it's just right. Let's make the measure. Now we're going to switch hands. Notice how we've measured with our right hand. So we lay it right on the thread. Now the thread is only halfway up the hook. Trim. Notice how nice and easy it is to put that hair on without the excess fibers. Whoop, it twisted on us. This happens a lot. Okay, now we're going to have to back up. Now watch, we're going to throw a little bit of a slack and just make a couple of uh, loose wraps at first. And so it's just right on the top of the hook shank. If you wrap to the back too tightly, you're going to end up flaring the tail, just like that. Ugh, look at that wild tail. You want to wrap smoothly and evenly and gradually tighten up your thread. Now we're going to try this all over again. We're going to realign our tail, retrim it, and put it back on the top of the shank. Now we're wrapping it in. Now you notice I wrapped it really quick and tightly, but what I did is before I made that first wrap, I added a little bit of slack to the thread. Now we're wrapping it tight at the start of the tail. Now towards the back we loosen it up and gradually tighten the thread in a smooth, even flow so it doesn't flare the tail. Now it's time to check out your tail. Is it the right length? Well, this tail's a little long, so let's unwrap it and trim it down a little bit. So we make sure that we have it the right length. It's very important to have your tail the right length from the eye to the bend. Now we're going to retie it. Now notice how we're laying out our thread. Now towards the back, we're going to go looser and continue forward tighter to halfway down the hook. Now let's check out our proportions. Our thread should end just above the end of the barb, and we should wrap our thread forward then to it's halfway down the shank. Now it's time to tie on our body. Now we've pre-selected out some deer hair. Now let's check this out. See, there's lots of little fibers that we want to take out. Look at all that garbage. We don't want that in there. All those are excess fibers. We want a nice, even group of deer hair that will all be the same length. Now, one of the important things as we put it in our hair stacker is to remember, you're going to have to start out with a lot of deer hair and end up with a smaller group of even deer hair. That's the key, all of them being even. Now, we're going to check it out. Notice the dark band. That's the tips of the deer hair. Then there's the white band. At the end of the white band is where we want to line up our tail. This is important. Remember that. They see the white band and where it starts. We want to even the tail up to that point. Now we're going to hold on with our other hand and trim out the base of the hair. It's easier to tie the base of the hair down to the body when it's been trimmed. Okay, now let's check out our proportions. Line up our tail and trim the hair. Okay, now we got to begin with a loose wrap. Notice how the base of the hair starts to spin over. Okay, if you look very carefully underneath, we have fibers that are separating. This is the most frustrating part of tying this fly. About this time, you just want to keep wrapping it in and roll it over, and it just doesn't work, and a lot of choice words come out of your mouth, and most of the time, the fly is ejected from the vise with uh, a lot of nasty language. At this point, we're going to retie it. We're going to make a nice little loop, and gently tie it in. Now we're going to start tightening the thread down gradually and evenly. I call this the Chinese finger pull. Remember those little pulls that you had as a kid when you stuck your fingers in and the more you pulled the tighter that it got? Well, that's what we want to do. The more we wrap our thread, the tighter it becomes gradually. And you keep wrapping back and forth and gradually tying down the thread. This will keep it from twisting on you. A lot of uh, tires will ask me, how much hair should I use? Well, really, it 
takes a lot of experience tying different sizes, and then gradually you will know when you tie too much hair on the hook. It'll just start rolling over. Now I'm going to show you something new and different, and we're going to add some dubbing onto the thread instead of having just a thread body like in the old humpies. This way you can really uh, add a new dimension to your flies. You can add different colors, well, from different colors of yellow like a chartreuse or different colors of olive like dark olive and light olive. You can create a whole different way of tying in our humpy bodies. Now, another factor is that the dubbing will absorb uh, fly floating a lot easier and make your fly float a lot better. Now we're going to wrap it through just right over the top. Now remember, be true to your proportions. Don't wrap too far forward and change it. Your body should be halfway down the hook. Okay, now pick up your deer hair and give it a twist. We're trying to tighten it up. We're going to give it a slight twist and pull it towards you, wrapping the thread over with your left hand. Make a very loose tie and then another a little bit tighter tie. Now we're going to use our right hand and tie in a base so we can attach our hackle. All right, so notice we're making a wide base so that our hackle can wrap behind the wing. Now we're going to wrap in front of the wing so the wing does not pull forward. By wrapping in front of the wing, we make the wing stand straight up and look more natural. We must divide the wing, however, get out a couple of those pesky little fibers while we're doing this, but we must make the wing divide so that it's both natural and will provide balance. This is accomplished by what we call an Xing pattern, wrapping the thread between the wings in the form of an X. Now we're going to wrap around each individual wing so it will stand straight up and be a lot more durable. You have to do this slowly. Notice how I'm holding the wing after each wrap around the wing. Now let's take a forward look at it and see how the thread goes from the base of the fly up the wing and back. Now we're going to wrap this one wing. After each wrap we grab the wing, go up the wing, and then back down to the base. Get a little slight pull, we'll make it stand straight up, and you have a perfectly divided wing. Before we wrap or hackle, let's check out the wing to make sure it's endurable. And you can do that, check to see if your wraps are in tight, and check it out with your finger to make sure it's durable. And if it's right, then it's time for the old hackle. Saddle hackles provide good value if you're going to be tying size 10s, 12s, and even some 14s. Both Spencer's, Hoffman's, and Met's provide excellent saddle hackles and Grizzly. Now we're going to be using Grizzly. Now you can use other hackles such as Badger and Chinchilla and Brown, depending on the color that you want. Now we've taken two saddle hackles from the left hand side of the saddle patch. Notice how it has a bend to the left. Now you do not want to pick a hackle from the other side so you have one going one direction and one going the other direction because we're going to teach you how to wrap two hackles at once. Now let's trim off some of the soft base and the object when tying two hackles at once is to make sure that the hackle acts as one. Now we're going to tie it in at the base of the wing making sure that it's in between the wings and that there isn't any vein sticking up. Now we use our scissors to adjust our wing and make sure there isn't any hackle sticking out. Now we've wrapped the first wrap with our hand and we're going to attach our hackle pliers. Now make sure that the hackle melts together as one. And we're going to get a good pair of hackle pliers. Chest to grip before you start wrapping. Now notice that I'm wrapping straight up and down, three wraps behind the wing, and we're trying to make an equal three wraps in front of the wing. So we get the proper balanced wing. The object is to get the wing in between the hackle and not have all the hackle behind the wing. This will give you a properly balanced fly. Why do I wrap two hackles at once? Well, I like the nice even wrapping of the hackle. And this can provide a lot of frustration for people. But the secret is making sure that both hackles act as one. Now we'll whip on the old whip finish and make sure that the hackle has not uh, been tied under. And trim it on, off, and we can use our fingers to test out uh, and make sure that the fly is balanced out properly. Now look at the proportion. From the tip of the tail to the wing should be a 45 degree angle. 
Now notice how the wing it melts into the hackle and it doesn't stick too far above the hackle. We have a properly balanced humpy. There's a lot of variations we can add to the humpy to change its colorations. A lot of it can be done with hackle by changing the colors of the hackle. It can be brown or badger or now we can even dye grizzly hackle to various shades to come up with some really interesting patterns such as this particular fly here. This is an olive dye grizzly and it has a dubbed light olive body. What does this bring to mind? Well, an imitation to the green drake or several other green and olive type mayflies. It's a great new world out there of what you can do to your humpies by changing even the actual deer hair by getting a light chocolate brown color and matching it with a chocolate brown dyed grizzly. You can come up with a great deal of variations. Uh, how about this particular pattern using all elk hair? This is a bleached elk hair with a cream hackle and we have a cream mayfly imitation. There's so much that we can do now. And how about this for a different variation? A double humpy. Yes, two humpies floating together. Now, how is this accomplished? Well, you tie a regular humpy, then start in again without the tail, and tie another hump, and tie another wing. And what do you have? Ah, two humpies floating together. A very effective fall pattern. 